So wunderbar, so wunderschön, wonderful where my days here. Goodbye, Berlin, auf Wiedersehen, I'll come back to you. Now I must go, I'll come again, cause my love is true. same city, but it is also an island surrounded by hostility. Berlin is walled in, hemmed in, fenced in, cut off from the rest of Germany, from the rest of the world. Four million Berliners on both sides of this barrier are more thoroughly and effectively cut off from one another than they are from San Francisco or Singapore. If you happen to live on one side of the wall and your parents, relatives, or friends live on the other side, you can never see them again, never. The wall has become an obstacle which has proved to be effective. Few people, very few, succeed in getting out.
that door. Let me in. Huh? Open the door, buddy. Come on, come on, open up. Sorry, mister, you're too late. What do you mean, too late? Let me in. This is an army train. It's run by the book. Officially, it's closed. I don't care what no. kind of a train this is, and I don't care how you officially I'm doing it. Well, I'm listen, 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 All right, Mr. Cowan. They're in the second compartment down there from the end. That's more like it. Seal the door, Sergeant. Commander Lieutenant Novak, train 349, Berlin to Frankfurt. We are now departing at, uh, at 1916. Over and out. Ready to check the list, Lieutenant? Let's go. Want me to help you, ma'am? Oh, thank you very much. Sure. Everything all right, sir? No complaints, Lieutenant. You heard? Mary Jane. All right, Dad. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, girl. Uh, Miss Watts? Lieutenant. Oh. I'm Miss Watts. Uh, Lieutenant, we have two compartments for the young ladies and one for myself. Ma'am? Here are all the names. Thank you very much. Good evening. Look, come on, give that. Here, here. Oh, ah, sorry. That's the team. That'd be a great winner. Ah, see, Lieutenant, like this girl, I was. So this gal says to me, she says you can't even speak English, cartoon boy. At ease, Sergeant. to get out of Berlin for a change. How's Mr. Carter? I could use a couple of extra blankets, Tom. All right, I'll see that you get them. Sure, miss. Thanks. See you later. Okay. <laughs> okay, Lieutenant. Check in the manifest, ma'am. I saw the stove. Oh. Hey, buddy. Come here a minute. Yes, sir. How can I get a message to my office in London? From this train? No, from that special plane the Army laid on for me to make sure that I get there tonight. Excuse me, sir. Is anything wrong, Mr. Cowan? Now, don't get me started on that, Lieutenant. Just tell me how I can let my office know that I've been delayed by an Army snafu. If you write out a message, sir, I'll ask the Berlin commander to relay it. Okay. Just when does this conveyance get to Frankfurt? It's due in at 7.14 in the morning. Due in? Are we arriving on schedule or aren't we? I've got to make a plane connection for London. I'm responsible only for the safety of the passengers and the freight. The Germans run the railroad. You mean my safety is in your hands, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. It is. Mm-hmm. He's a doll, that one. D. 
côté. blankets and take him with that sick man in the next car? Certainly, Lieutenant. Thanks. Busy, sir. Thanks to Fogg and a mix-up in flight schedules tonight, I'm riding the U.S. Army train that operates between Berlin and the heart of Communist East Germany and Frankfurt in the Western Zone. It's a very special train. Since the end of the Second World War, it has been one of the few remaining points of friendly working contact between the Soviet and American armed forces. Sealed before departure, it moves without controls and inspection through East Germany, like a piece of privileged American territory on wheels. The rub is that the narrow ribbon of steel on which these wheels roll and the locomotive that powers them are the property of the communist regime of the East Zone. Then, oh, here's where the Soviet zone begins, where the wire begins. Um. Good evening. Conductor, yeah. when do we come to the barricades? Barricades? She means the barbed wire barrier that starts where the wall ends. That is our border. Don't you have borders in America? Not barbed wire. We don't pen people in and imprison them. Nobody is in prison. This border is to keep travel makers out of our republic. You don't expect me to believe that. Occupation time is over. Okay, okay, Not that'll do. But the loose call. Excuse, sir. Why, Franklin, I believe he's a communist. Maybe he is. Maybe they both are. They're wearing East German uniforms. East Germans? Then what are they doing on our train? That's part of our agreement. They supply crews and personnel. Well, what do you know? All right, girls, now, quickly, quickly. One, two, three, one, two, three, quickly, and then quickly, quickly, quickly. And not a word. Go to sleep now. Good night. Yes, come in. Oh. You have a blanket, Mr. <laughs> Cassie. Thank you. Who's that, miss? The West German conductor, Mr. Carter. Well, an ally. Yes, sir. Can you do me a favor, my friend, and show this young lady to the lounge car? She needs a cup of coffee badly. Ah, uh, so? With pleasure, sir. At once, sir. You're very kind, Mr. Carter. I'm not really. I'm just being selfish. I can't see you anyway, so what's the use of having you around? All right, but I won't be long. This way, miss. Good sleep, sir. Thank you, my friend. Aha, uh -huh. you're jealous. Yeah. What do you want? Good evening, Mrs. Williams. <laughs> I just wanted to say good night. Good night. Good night. Fred? Yeah? Do you think your friends will like me in, um, yes, Dr. Ott? Canton, Ohio, leave me. Kenton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Come here. Tell me about your friends. Karen, we're on our honeymoon. Let's talk about them tomorrow, huh? What's your hurry? We'll be together a long time. Look, honey, tonight it's... Tonight is something special. Yeah, yeah. And now where are you going? I'll be back soon. Exciting trip, isn't it? First time on this train? No, but it's the last time I'll make this trip. Well, that certainly calls for a celebration. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Hi. Hi. Coffee, Bill. Yes, sir. 
Thanks. So, how long are you going to stay in Frankfurt? It depends how Mr. Carter's operation goes. It's a rough trip for him in his condition. Now, don't start knocking my railroad, Kathy. At least we're going to get you there, fog or no fog. And that's more than the air transport boys can do, right? <laughs> you are sensationnel. Now, what does that mean? Is that supposed to be good or bad? Don't you know? You know, that reminds me, Kathy. What about those French lessons you promised to give me? Oh, you're too old for that now, Tom. Too old? Huh. I never had that problem before. That's right, Thanks, Dan. Hope you don't get now nervous I'm just and crowds. That interesting age, Kathy. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> don't worry about getting a seat. I know the head waiter personally. Now, here's a message to my office, Lieutenant. Next time you contact Berlin, I'll do my best, Mr. Cowan. Uh, don't worry about doing your best, honey. Just give him the message and ask him to transmit it. My office will take care of the charges. <laughs> coffee? Soft drinks? Oh, anything. One coffee and some club soda and ice. We ain't got no club soda or ice either, sir. Yeah, well, never mind. Just give us about half a glass of water. Yes, sir. Great little saloon they got here. Always travel first class. If that's liquor, Mr. Cowan, it's forbidden by the rules of this train. Well, if those are the rules of this train, Lieutenant, then this is cough medicine. Very good cough medicine, too. Would you like some? How about you? You, miss? No, thanks. I'm on duty tonight. You a soldier, young lady? I'm a nurse, civilian, but I'm on duty all the same. Duty. The great Berlin pastime and alibi. Everybody does it, but does anybody know why? We have a commitment here. To do what? To keep Berlin open to the West. Yeah. What for? Have you ever heard of the Berlin Wall, Mr. Cowan? Listen, Sonny. Don't talk to me about the Germans and their walls. They've been building them for a long time, around concentration camps, around the Warsaw Ghetto. They're experts at it. But all that is in the past. Can't you forget it? Forget how these supermen tried to conquer the world over the dead bodies of millions? Forget Auschwitz and Rotterdam? Forget Coventry and liturgy? My heart bleeds for those poor Germans. What has that to do with the children and the young people who were not even born when all that happened? Everything the Germans are suffering today, they brought on themselves. They started it, so don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel sorry. But if people go on hitting each other like this, it can only lead to another war. Sure, and if we unify and rearm Germany, that'll lead to peace, huh? But they are allies, aren't they? Yeah, that doesn't mean I have to love them. Do you think hitting them will make things better for anybody? Hey, Mellor, what's the matter? Nichts Besonderes. We have to let another trend pass. Yeah, well, that's been twice this week. You can't help it. It's on the main track. Get that wider. Does this train stop in the east zone? I don't know. I don't think so. It stops on Marienborn, the border. But we are not there yet. Finish. We move again. Okay. 
Danke. You are German? Ja. You were not on this train when it left Berlin? No. I am um, here. Just got on. You just... I escape. and seven crew. We are four Germans from the Deutsche Demokratische Republik and one is uh, from West Germany. Thank you, Herr Miller. Na, dann ist ja alles okay. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. Where did you go, nurse? I just had doubtless, Carter. It's not just cuckoo that will be the situation, it's vicious because it goes on and on. And now you've got kids living out the consequences of something that happened before they were even born. We're all doing that, I'm afraid. Well, sure, but... Uh... Okay, baby, have it your own way. Sorry, pal. I thought the compartment was uh, was empty here. I'm gonna bunk in here. Sure, bitte. What you like, please. What? It's empty here. Stay, bitte, yes. Uh, where are you from, buddy? Magdeburg. Magdeburg. In, in the East Zone. Yeah. I ran away. You ran away. Well, that's uh, that's great, pal. Really great. Do you think I'll make it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Good luck. Maybe they love each other. <laughs> Maybe. Good night. for love. Let's hope they make up and pass the confusion on to their children. Please, it's important. I think I'll turn in. Will you? Mm. Honey, do you know that empty compartment on the train? Well, there's a man in it. No. He's East German. He's trying to escape on this train. How did he get on this train? Honey, I don't know. I have no idea. I must talk to him. Are you crazy? Now listen, he means nothing but trouble. You stay right here. I'll go see the lieutenant, yeah? No. Oh, will you stop that? Let me go. Ooh. Oh. Oh, what are you trying to do? Kill me? Oh, you prick. He split my head open. Maybe you have a concussion. Oh. Have a place down quietly for a moment. Oh. I'll explain it to you. There's nothing to explain. Yes, there is. Noch eine Stunde. Ich lebe mich noch ein bisschen hin, Leon Ami abteilen. Ist gut. Ich weck dich im Marienbau. I'm sorry. 
I'm going to sleep in here. You have a compartment. Yes, Mr. Carter is having trouble sleeping. He'll be better off alone. And where am I to sleep? Well, isn't there a chair car? Oh, yeah. What are you doing, making a house call? I don't want to disturb you, but... You come on in and disturb me any time. Come on. Now, how about a drink? No, thanks. Okay. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I might as well talk to you, Mr. Cohen. I have a problem. Well, you came to the right guy. Problems are my specialty. There is a young man on this train. You mean the it... lieutenant? No, not the lieutenant. What, another young squirt? <laughs> well, I'll tell you your real problem. You're aiming at the wrong age level. I'm afraid you don't understand. Wait a minute, what's your hurry? I've got a problem. Look at me. I'm feverish and palpitating. You're a nurse. Do something. Take my pulse. Feel my forehead. Go ahead. Well, I'd better go to see how Mr. Carter is. Say, uh, what'd you come here for anyway? Never mind, it's really not important. It may not be important to you, but when a good-looking man comes into my compartment at night, it's important to me. I really must go now. Okay, baby. If you really must. Good night. Good night. Say, if you happen to change your mind... Say, what's going on in this empty compartment? Nothing. Well, if I'm reading this right, you bought yourself a first-class headache. Look at him. He's only a kid. I'm looking. What's your name, boy? Dieter Banner. I come from Magdeburg. What are you doing? I'm a reporter. What do you think I'm doing? But you're getting in trouble. He's in trouble already. How old are you? Twenty-four. What do you do for a living? I'm conductor. On a train? Nine on the bus. I was a student before. They have put me out of university. Because my parents have gone to West Germany before the wall was built. Where'd you get on the train? Berlin? No, when it stopped just before. Don't lie to me, boy. Oh, but... Come on, kid. Somebody put you up to this. What have you got to do with it? I helped him. I opened the door. I see. Do you know what's going to happen to you if the Trappos catch you? That is our police. This is American train. Sure, but you're on it illegally. But Americans will understand. You must help me. Me? It's got nothing to do with me. You're the army's problem. But the army is also American. You are American. It's the same, no? <laughs> God forbid. He doesn't understand any of this. Why do you want to frighten him? What do you want me to do? Soft soap him to the very end when he gets nabbed? You don't have to find out if you don't write the story. Listen. The American army is smuggling refugees through East Germany in a sealed train. That's hotter than anything that's happened at the Berlin Wall, and I've got an exclusive on it. You think I'm going to throw that away? You really won't have a story until it gets past the Russian checkpoint at Marienborn. And you won't be out of the soup until the same time, isn't that it? Please, I do not understand. It doesn't matter. It's all right now. You just keep quiet and keep the light off. Yeah, come on. I'm not through with you yet, sonny boy. Anything wrong? 
Oh, <laughs> oh, soldier. Um, uh, I've been using this room so Mr. Carter can rest better. Is there any way of uh, locking the door? My things are in there. Uh, that's a good idea, ma'am. I don't trust these foreigners either. Anytime you want to get back in, just ask an MP. We've all got keys. Thank you. Say, you're a pretty smart cookie. Yes, there's still a problem. What, another one? No, it's the same one. Somebody else on this train knows about him. I thought it was you, but now... I told you problems were my specialty. Why didn't you come to an expert in the first place? Oh, who was it? to Corporal Williams, please. Don't disturb. He is sleeping. We don't have to worry about him. A fantastic story is breaking on this train right under the nose of the Army and without its knowledge. I am sitting not ten feet away from what may turn out to be the hottest story of the Cold War, and I'm the only reporter on the spot. Perhaps the only reporter who will ever interview the star of that story. He is a 24-year-old East German fleeing to the West. Lieutenant. We're now pulling into Marienborn, the last Russian checkpoint before crossing into West Germany. For this refugee, six minutes to freedom. But also for this refugee, six minutes of agony, suspense, and fear. The most important six minutes in his young life. so good. Now, good luck. Oh, listen, honey, I've got to go. Yes? Nice. But, sweetheart, listen. Mm -hmm. Captain Rodnoff? Good evening, Lieutenant. Cold enough for you tonight? Yes, this winter doesn't seem to end. Oh, that will.
I guess they change engines here. If that's all they do, we're in business. Have a good trip, Lieutenant. Thank you, Captain. Oh, about that famous Russian efficiency. Where's my locomotive? It should be along soon. It's a West German crow from Frankfurt. They are not as efficient as we are. You don't say. My phone, excuse me. Right, see you in a couple days. Captain? May I see your manifest, Lieutenant? But you've already approved it. I know, but there is a question about its accuracy. Have you ever found a mistake in a manifest of mine? I never questioned one before, Lieutenant. Then just what is it that you're after, Captain? We have a report that there is a citizen of the German Democratic Republic aboard the train, and not on the manifest. That's ridiculous. I hope you are right. For me, this is nothing but a nuisance. But I must settle this charge, one way or the other. You can dismiss it, Captain Rodnoff, as unfounded. On what basis? On the basis of the word of an American officer, as approved by a Russian officer. Forget the manifest. Let me go aboard and make a small search. Then it will be settled. You want me to let you search my train? But you're not allowed on this train. They can't touch him, can they? Well, you know what the Russians are like. They might try anything. We have known each other for some time. We have worked together cordially. Let's do this on a personal basis, unofficially. I'm sorry, Captain Rodnoff. I must refuse. It's against all my instructions. You put me in a difficult position. If I can't settle this personally, I'll have to act officially, according to our procedures. Meaning what? If there is any question about the train, I cannot permit its departure. I must withhold that locomotive. Are you serious, Captain? As serious as you, Lieutenant. We'll see about that, sir. Come on, Sergeant. Pigeon. Then Zug sofort abkuppeln. Der Zug bleibt hier. Was ist denn los? Los, los, mach es schon! Kalei, kalei, kalei! Now they want to search the train, Colonel. Lieutenant, was that train carefully checked before departure? Yes, sir, before and after. I'm positive that there's no unauthorized person aboard. In that case, proceed with emergency measures according to your standing orders. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yes, sir. Over and out. Sergeant, round up all military personnel aboard and tell them that their orders are canceled. They're now on active duty under my command. Then break out the ordnance chests and arm them. Right, Lieutenant. And Sergeant, that order includes officers. Yes, sir. All right, you get over here. Move. Okay, you guys. This is a restricted area, Mr. Cowan. Hey, Lieutenant, how long are we going to sit around here? There will be a slight delay, sir. Lieutenant, do you believe there's a refugee on board? 
Mr. Cowan, any information on that matter will be given you by the Public Relations Branch in Frankfurt tomorrow. Why don't you come off the soldier boy bit? At the rate we're going, we won't get to Frankfurt tomorrow. There's nothing I can do about that, sir. Excuse me. All right, let me go. All right, let's go. Do you know what's happening, sir? It's a military thing. Mary Jane, go back to bed. Oh, Mother, don't be a square. I must ask all of you to get out of the corridor and into your rooms. This corridor must be kept clear and your doors must remain closed. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I'm not in the Army. I get into your yet. compartment, Mr. Cowan, or I'll have you placed under arrest and locked in. Nurse, what's going on out there? The Russians are saying that there is some sort of refugee on the train. Uh-huh. They never let up, do they? It's not the air corridors, it's the canals. If they can't block the roads, they try to cut off our trains. Cut off our trains? Just because of one person? It's not the object that counts for them. It's what they can do with it. Лейтенант Чико, к вашему распоряжению, товарищ капитан. Спасибо, товарищ лейтенант. Поставьте стражу вокруг американского поезда. Так точно, товарищ капитан. Еще ленги! Стройся! Верно! Верно! Приказ закрыть военный американский поезд. Поставьте стражу в интервалах. Первый взвод! Первый взвод! Первый взвод! Марш! Looks like the Russians mean business, Lieutenant. So do I, Sergeant. Get your men off the train and out in front of the platform, MPs only. Yes, sir. All MPs for up for guard duty. Let's go, move. MPs up for guard duty. Come on, move. All right, one man in front of each door. Let's go. Я, товарищ майор, по приказу капитана Родинова, который здесь командует. Ну, хорошо. Вы с ума сошли? Хотите провоцировать этих американцев на войну? Товарищ майор, но в фокусном сообщении, что... С которого времени мы получаем приказы от немцев? Они подтверждают, что в поезде... Ну и что? Мы не контролируем этот поезд. Это вы знаете. Американский командант поезда. Капитан. Well, Lieutenant. Why do you give us all this trouble? I'm giving you trouble. First you hold up my locomotive, and then you're surrounded by armed troops. Now all that's a drug violation of our working agreement, and I've notified the Berlin command of that effect. Lieutenant, we have it on our good authority that there is a undeclared East German aboard. Major, I personally supervise all security measures on my train. I know who's on board and who's not. This passenger is something you people have invented. Lieutenant, if you insist on being difficult, I might be forced to order my men to search the train. If you do that, sir, I'm going to resist you. With what? With those five men outside? With everything we've got, and if that's not enough, we'll get more. Now listen, my beloved young friend. We are not playing uh, games here. If you get too careless with those little pop guns of yours, you are liable to start a big war. I'm not playing games either, Major. I know what our rights are, and I intend to protect them. Lieutenant, why don't you go back to your train? Take a thorough search. Let us know what you find. We'll wait for your report. Hey, 
Sarge. I've got to talk to the lieutenant. He's busy. Listen, Sarge, I've got to Shut up and take a post down there. We've got trouble enough. Come on that side. Lieutenant Obeck. Williams, get in. Lieutenant Obeck, sir. In zehn Minuten kommt der Hinterzonenzug und die Amis blockieren uns das Gleis. Frag doch die Russen, was sie machen sollen. Ja. Now what do I do about this refugee, sir? Shall I turn him over to the Russians? Don't do anything. I'll get back to you right away. Over now. I excuse me. Bitte, why are they angry? Forget it. But not to the Russians give me over. Look, Banner, I'm not giving you over. It's the Berlin Command. They make the decisions. Aber Sie können... I mean, you must tell them. Tell them I want to be free. What they decide depends strictly on our treaty with the Russians. What has it to do with me, a treaty? It has to do with the rules of this train. You're not even supposed to be on it. Colonel Anderson calling, sir. Novak here. We're sending you a team of specialists, Lieutenant. We'll take orders from them. Right, Colonel. Now, what about this refugee, sir? Keep him under security until Major Finnegan gets there. Over and out. Over and out. You giving me over? No. Gott sei Dank. Now, wait a minute, Banner. Let's get one thing straight. I didn't say you wouldn't be turned over later. Either way, it doesn't depend on me. Lieutenant, Russians want to talk to you. Sergeant, take this man back to his compartment and lock him up. Okay, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Well, Lieutenant, you want to see me, Captain? You must have had time to serve the train by now. We have been waiting to hear if you found anything. Captain Rodnoff, the Berlin Command is sending a team of negotiators to discuss this matter with you and Major Menshikov. I see. Now, until I get here, I'm not authorized to make any statements to anyone. Hey, buddy, what's with that refugee? Me, I only work here. I wouldn't know. What are we going to do with him? Sorry, ma'am, same answer. You told me this train was searched and sealed before we left Berlin. Now, how did he get on? He must have snuck in through the keyhole. <laughs> That's pretty good. You got any better answers, Mr. Cowan? You seen Banner told them? What do you mean about you? Was ist denn passiert? 
Die Russen lassen den Amizug nicht durch. Warum? Die behaupten, dass wir ein Nation im Zug haben. Ja, ruf doch bitte meine Frau an in Kreuzberg. 61, 21, 13. Vielleicht kassieren die uns alle. Ich muss heiter sein, Freunde. Mach bloß das Fenster zu. Das ist mal bloß nicht der friedliche Kohlstessenz, Mann. Ich wollte doch nicht von Rüschow gehört, wa? Major Pennigan. Как поживаете, майор? Спасибо, майор. Хорошо. Капитан Горин. Mrs. Captain Kolsky. Капитан. Major. What is this, Major? Red Army Day? We are celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> It's a merely routine measure of precaution. Against what? Against the unforeseen. Comrade Lieutenant, show these officers to the train. Thank you, Major. Lieutenant, the Major's coming. Lieutenant Novak, sir. Finnegan. Sir? This is Captain Kolsky. Lieutenant. Sir? This is certainly one beautiful mess you've gotten us into, Lieutenant. I don't know how that refugee got on here, sir. Did you try asking him? He claims he opened a door, but I know they were all locked from the inside because I checked them. Mr. Carter's on his train, isn't he, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. But he's in pretty bad shape. Well, so are we, Lieutenant. Let's see if Mr. Carter has any brilliant ideas. He's in the next car, Captain. Sergeant, stay here, please. Come in. Here are the officers from Potsdam, Mr. Carter. Hello, Harry. Mike Finnegan. Mike, I've been expecting you. Harry, I hate to barge in. Let's skip you. the formalities, Mike. We've got a lot to go over and very little time. Fine. Come on in, Captain Colsky, Lieutenant Novak. If you need me, I'll be around, Mr. Carter. Thank you, nurse. Now, gentlemen, about this alleged East German aboard. Alleged? Mike, have you actually seen any East German on this train? No, oh, but I Good. intend to. Then you can truthfully say so to the Russians. They haven't seen one either. Looks bad for him, doesn't it? Better start worrying about yourself, young lady. You're a government employee. I helped him because I had to. I would do it again. Don't anybody hear you say that. He's a refugee. Well, that's one possibility. He can also be a provocateur, planted by the Russians or the East Germans. After all, it was their signalman who stopped the train. What would the purpose be? If the Russians can prove that he's on this train, then they've got something on us. A violation of the treaty. Precisely. Another opening wedge for trying to change it, for putting this train out of business. I suppose he's legitimate. That is, uh, if he were on the train. That's even more complicated. Once the word got around, there'd be 20 more tomorrow trying to sneak aboard. And 200 later in the week. Great. 
I can see us mounting armed guards on the station platform to chase them away. A wonderful way to win popularity in Germany. Yeah. Harry, do you have any ideas that don't make me feel like cutting my throat? Well, the most important thing is to act with caution. Talk to them, feel them out. Try to figure out what they're up to. And then if you want to come back and see me again, don't hesitate. Thanks, Harry. Okay, Lieutenant. Sir. Hey, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, I must speak to you, Lieutenant. Please go back to your compartments. There's a sick man in there. He needs to be quiet. I'm going to look at him. I want you to know, Lieutenant, that my girls are playing the junior championship in Frankfurt this morning. If we're going to be late, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Miss Watts, I don't, don't think Don't that... give me any of your excuses, young man. We're civilians and we have our rights. I must remind you, ma'am, that this is a military train. And technically, you're all under my orders. Does that mean we're supposed to keep our mouths shut? Not at all, Mr. Cowan. You can say anything you want, provided anybody will listen to you. What's the matter, Lieutenant? You afraid to hear what I have to say? You know, I think it's pretty high-handed of you to put our lives in jeopardy without asking us how we feel about risking them. Nobody's lives are in jeopardy, sir. No? Have you looked out that window lately? What do you think those are out there? Toy soldiers? And when the Russians decide to board the train, how are you going to go about keeping them off of it? They're not coming on this train, Mr. Don't tell Cowan. that to me, kid. Tell that to them. Our people from Potsdam are right out there now telling it to them. Oh, sure, and the Russians are going to say yes or defending him just the way that you do. Is that it? Don't you agree, Colonel? Don't ask me, Mr. Cowan. I'm only the highest ranking officer on the spot. There's nobody interested in my opinion. I am, and I've got a bigger audience than Menshikov and Finnegan put together. I think this whole situation is ridiculous because of bungling and incompetence. I should think, sir, that a man of your rank would support the officer in charge. We're having enough trouble as it is. Of course, because we're in the wrong and refuse to admit it. That German refugee has no business on this train. There's nothing to discuss with the Russians. We should turn him over and stop all this foolishness. He's right. What do you know about such things? Are you defending that, that refugee? I'm a refugee too. You see my way out? This makes it legal. But I'm still a refugee. If your husband doesn't mind being used as an exit visa, that's his business. But that's no reason why the rest of us should be caught in a crossfire just because some other refugee decides to use this train to get out. You would give him up? Like the Colonel said, lady, we got no choice in the matter. Well, have you decided it's a better story if the Russians take us to Cowan? We haven't thought about that. Frankly, I liked it better the other way before all these people found out about it. But it's out of our hands now, baby. I'm sorry, I have trusted you. You knew about this refugee all along, both of you? I suggest we forget these personal dramas and stick to the main point. Now, I'm sure most of us agree we should give up this refugee and be on our way to Frankfurt. Let's take a vote. What do you think about it? What do I think? My husband died on military duty in Berlin. His body is on this train. I'm taking him home for burial. I don't care if we never get to Frankfurt. I'm sorry, madam, but I do. You'll go back to your compartments at once, all of you, and wait for further instructions. You're not out of the woods yet, Lieutenant. All right, break it up. Let's get back in your compartments. Come on, move! All right, let's go. Come on, come on. Get in that compartment, close the door, and keep it closed. Should have let me slide that bastard, sir. <laughs> if I was commanding general of this outfit, I wouldn't let another civilian on this train, Lieutenant. My word, that huh? was. Hmm? Look, Sam, uh, run a check on the boys outside and see that everyone's where he should be. Right, Lieutenant. What is it, Sam? It's me, Tom. I'm sorry. Tom, Forget I... Forget it. 
Tom, I came here to tell Look, you that... Look, Kathy, the guy got on the train. It's not your fault. But did he tell you how he got on the train? Yeah, he found a door unlocked. I unlocked it. You what? He was hanging on. He was going to be killed. I had to open the door. I didn't know he was a refugee. I didn't know who he was. Oh, it wouldn't have made any difference, I suppose. No, I guess not. I never told you anything about it. No. You wanted to protect me, I guess. But, Kathy, why didn't you tell me about it? It seems silly now, and all, when I realized who he was, what he was, I, I thought it was better to try to sneak him through without telling anyone. I thought it would make less trouble for everybody. Yeah, but you told Cowan. No, I didn't tell him, Tom. Did you see him? Uh, well, not personally, sir. Uh-huh. You gentlemen haven't seen him, we haven't seen him, and yet we waste our time sitting here... You the haven't room. seen him? We have not. And yet we sit here and argue holding up a train, calling out armed troops, and all on account of a hypothetical character that not a one of us has even seen. Well, the fact you didn't see him doesn't disprove his existence. No, but if there were someone aboard, unknown to us, but known to your people, I would be forced to conclude that you had something to do with his being on the train that he was secretly planted there as a provocateur. Epset. But what motive could we possibly have? What motive does any provocateur have? To provoke an incident, to make trouble, in order to find an advantage somewhere else. You accuse us of being provocative. You Americans, who are constantly waving your flag, pushing around your friends, so-called allies. Now, just a minute, Menshikov. We're not at the UN, and we didn't come here to discuss world politics. Let's stick to the problem in front of us. But you question our peaceful intentions. You find that so strange, Major? Now, what's our train carrying? Soldiers on leave, army wives, teenagers, babies, an invalid, and a hypothetical refugee. I you surrounded them with a whole damn company of armed troops, and you insist that you're not being provocative. Children are frightened of our soldiers, and you call it provocative. Well, it's a very small misunderstanding, which can easily be correct. You see, we are not provocative anymore. Brigadier, shut up! Снимайте старую с поезда! Я стражу! Разойтись по машинам! Sure, call the shots good, Mr. Cowan. Look at them Russians. They're pulling out. That's what you think, buddy. You just don't know the Russians. That's their favorite tactic. One step backward and two steps forward. Take my word for it, boy. Next time they move, they're coming right onto this train.
open. Yes. What do you want? Mushrooms, please. Please. Okay. What the hell are you doing here, Bill? I told you to stay by that compartment. The guy said he had to go, Sarge. When you gotta go, you got... Sarge, listen! Shut up! But what if the vote... Shut up! Find out? Get out, damn it. right to prevent the movement of a criminal across this border. A criminal? Now the hypothetical refugee is a hypothetical criminal. Hmm? And if he is a wanted criminal, you must have a file on him. What's his name? Occupation. How old is he? And what does he look like? What crime did he commit? Well, leaving his country without permission, it's a criminal offense. Maybe in your country, Major, but not in mine. In my country, he'd still be a refugee. Here he is a criminal, and you are protecting him. Major Menchikov, I don't We know. have nothing to say to each other, Major Finnegan. I have to report it to my headquarters, and they'll decide what course to take with you, honest, righteous Americans. Down, young man. Like some coffee? Oh, please, take it. Thank you. Oh, Bill, young man, why did you get off the train like that? You could have been killed. When I hear you in the corridor against me, I realize you do not want me on the train. Good heavens. Here's your coffee. Thank you. 
Now, here in the lounge car, we can hear the authentic reaction of passengers to this latest twist in this chain of surprises. Is that thing for real, mister? It certainly is, young lady. Two hours after I hit London, it goes on the air. Can I take something? Sure, later. You too? Yes, you too, later. Give me a chance. Please let me through. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will hear a few words from the young man who twice in one night risked his life and narrowly missed death in his determination to escape from the Eastern Zone. Tell us, Dieter Banner, in your own words, why did you get on this train in the first place? I had to get out. I looked for a way. It's very hard to escape. Then I see this train stop one night near Magdeburg. Again, a few nights later. So I wait every night. And uh, tonight... Uh... Tonight you finally made it, is that it? Good. Now, you knew this is a military train operating under special regulations, didn't you? I live in a country where everything is regulations. If I do not go sometimes against regulations, I will never have a chance to live my life. And now the train is literally moving to Frankfurt. Tell us, Dieter Banner, how does it feel to know that you're on your way to freedom? Let me have your attention, please. You heard the lieutenant? Quiet! You must all go back to your compartments at once. Sergeant, lock this man up and make sure that this time he stays there. Yes, sir. But, but I thought everything was settled, Lieutenant. Are we going to Frankfurt now? Nothing is settled, Miss Watson. We're not going anywhere. We're just being moved to a siding. Now please go back to your compartments. What's the matter with you, Lieutenant? I beg your pardon, sir? Are you the train commander or aren't you? Yes, sir, I am. Well, then listen to this, train commander Novak. You goofed on security when you let that German get aboard the train. Then, just when I had things ironed out with the Russians, you let him get loose and blew my whole case sky high. Both things were beyond my control, Major. But I take full responsibility for the consequences. You take full responsibility. That's damn decent of you, Lieutenant. In any army in the world, you'd be court-martialed for just one of those foul-ups. Do you want me to relinquish command of my train now, sir? Excuse me, Major. Can we step outside a moment? Could you be just a little hard on your mic? If he can't handle the job, he shouldn't be in it. Well, maybe both blunders were accidents beyond his control. Tough shortcake. Well, tell the night, sir, he had a perfect military record. And a court martial. Well, maybe we won't have to go that far. I said maybe. For the time being, I want it understood that we will. Why? Just to give him something to worry about? No. To give the Russians something to cheer about. Lieutenant, until this last fiasco, the Russians are just as anxious to get rid of this whole mess as we were. And now, sir? Now we made fools of them in front of a hundred eyewitnesses. They have to have a chance to save face publicly. I have to tell them that you're going to be court-martialed on your return to Berlin. Meanwhile, you will continue with your duty assignment as before. Yes, sir. Major, what about the German? What's going to happen to him? Lieutenant, the Russians don't want him any more than we want to hand him over. They don't like playing errand boys for the East Germans. The Russians will let us keep the German if we give him your neck, and that they'll insist on. Well, that's one consolation, I suppose. Я понимаю. Слушаюсь. Будет исполнено. 
Главное управление Фанка не хочет международных осложнений. Вопрос должен быть разрешен на месте. Мы вернем локомотив? Посмотрим, посмотрим. Американцы идут обратно. What is it, Sam? It's a German guy. He wants to talk to you, Lieutenant. Tom, I'm busy. Lieutenant, he wants to give himself up. Sam, you stay here in case Berlin calls. I'll be here, Lieutenant. What's this about you giving yourself up? Let us speak true. It would happen. Sooner or later. Sooner or later, my foot. If you hadn't hopped off the train in front of those Russians and the Vapos, none of this would... Why did you have to do it? I feel here on American train was not my friends. It has nothing to do with friendship. This is an American military train. You were wrong when you sneaked aboard. No. I was wrong to believe what I hear on your radio. Don't blame me or any other American for your problems. You started that war and you lost it. And now you're paying for it. What has it to do with me? I was only born in 1939. That's funny. What? Well, we're the same age. Same age. What's this? The address of my parents in West Germany. Tell them what happened. Look, Banner, I, I want to try and explain something to you. There's an American major here, Major Finnegan, negotiating. I mean, uh, he's speaking about you to the Russians. And we, we have no intention of handing you over. It's not just talk. No, it's not just talk. It's a promise. I... I... Uh, thanks so much. Okay. You, Major, that our train commander will be disciplined. When I say forgive and forget, I mean just that. Let's consider this incident closed, closed and forgotten. Good. If people start to talk about it, you'll have more East Germans trying to get on your train. And we'll have to keep stopping it. That's the point. Let's terminate this misunderstanding in a friendly spirit of our meeting on the Elba. A meeting on the Elba. Seems like a million years ago, doesn't it? Well, we still remember it. Don't be mad. Sure do. Mexico. Что? Когда? Понимаю. Да. 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 Он здесь. Major Finnegan speaking. Yes, I understand. Very well. We have nothing more to discuss, Major. You will handle over the German. 
Come on. Major Manchikov. What's going on? What happened? That lousy reporter Cowan. Cowan? What the hell did he do now? Well, sir, is everything all right? All right, hell. Everything settled, Major? Settled? What's the matter, Finnegan? I'll tell you what's the matter, you cotton-picking pencil pusher, you! Congratulations, Cowan. I hope you enjoy that Soviet Medal of Honor. You certainly earned it. What the hell are you talking about? What happened? Well, the Russians were ready to back down and forget the whole thing quiet, and now the story's out. What about it? You trying to gag the press major and cover up the blunders of the military? It's a little late for that now that it's in all the Berlin papers. I don't work for the... Ber you mean that this story has hit the streets in Berlin? Of course. Permit me. Is it true that the story has come already in the papers? Is it possible? What do you know about it, Buster? I did it. I did it. I told two Berliners on Sender Song Train about it only a few hours ago. Haben Sie es tatsächlich gedrückt? Ich werde verrückt. It's unbelievable. Did I do something wrong? Lieutenant, that's the end of the ball game. What about Banner, sir? Who? The German. You'll have to hand him over. What? You'll have to hand him over, Lieutenant. That's impossible, sir. That's an order, Novak. I can't do that, sir. You can't do what, Lieutenant? I promised him that we wouldn't turn him over. I don't give a hoot in hell what you promised him. That has nothing to do with it. I didn't want to turn him over either, and I hadn't promised him a damn thing. We have no other choice, Lieutenant. Sir, we have an obligation to that in man. In a situation like this, Lieutenant, it's best to settle things fast before they get completely out of control. Exactly what I intend doing. I'm going to notify the Russians, Lieutenant. Meanwhile, you will alert the German and get him ready for the transfer. Hello? Hello, Berlin? Berlin, this is Train Commander Lieutenant Novak on, on uh, train 349. And I want to speak to Colonel Anderson right away. It's very important. Yes, I'll wait. Get out of here, Cowan. I want to talk to you, Lieutenant. But I don't want to talk to you. Now get out! Would you tell Colonel Anderson that when he gets out of that conference, to call me over and out? Lucky for you, he was out, son. I heard the whole thing in the corridor. If you're thinking of going over Finnegan's head at this stage of the game, you're out of your mind. Look, Mr. Cowan, I'm telling you for the last time, I don't want your advice or your opinion! If you want to carry on like a kid, that's your privilege, but don't expect the grown-ups to stand around and cheer. <coughs> What does that prove? I'm sorry, Cowan. Don't waste time being sorry. You've got a problem on your hands. Now sit down. I'm sorry I hit you and I said so. But you're gonna have to get your story from someone else. 
I didn't come here to talk about that. I've got my story. It's written right through the end. Nothing can change that. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? There's nothing that you or I or Finnegan or the Russians or even Banner himself can do to change things. You're going to have to hand him over. And if I refuse? Finnegan will bust you and turn your command over to somebody else, and the guy who replaces you will do it. Let him. You want to toss your career out the window, go ahead. Nobody's going to stop you. Just don't think you're being a big hero when you're taking the easy way out. I suppose you think it's easy to chuck all this just to keep a promise. Easy? No, of course it's not easy. But it's a lot harder to do what you know you must do when everything inside of you is fighting it. That takes real courage. And that, to use an old reporter's cliche, is what separates the men from the boys. That's Berlin. Well, son, from here on in, you're on your own. Schon gut.
пойдем. Помензи. Übernehmen Sie den Mann und führen Sie ihn ab. Danke. Los, los! Looks like snow on it, huh? But it was winter. 